Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video and today I'm taking a look at the Master Grade Epion. So I know you guys have been asking for this quite some time, so I decided to grab one and get one, and it is about time. This has existed since I actually moved to Japan in 2011. I didn't actually know it came out that year, so this was there the whole time I was there and after I left, and I don't know why I missed out on it. It looks so cool. One thing that really did shock me about this build first off is, I thought this would share some parts with the other Wing EW kits, but it does not. Everything in here is labeled Gundam Epion 2011. Now I will mention I absolutely adore the Endless Waltz line of wing kits. They're so good. That doesn't necessarily include the original Verka wing or the original Verka wing 0 EW. Those are okay, not great, not the worst by any margin. I'm talking about these ones right here. The Sandrock, Deathside, Heavy Arms and the Shenlong. These are really good kits. Hefty ABS frames. Pretty simple builds with a lot of payoff. These are really what cemented my love for Master Grade, and the Epion is better than I thought it would be. So anyway, jumping right into what is in the box, and there is the Gundam Epion with absolutely everything that it comes with. So what we've got in here is the Beam Sword, which is a bit of an understatement. This thing is, what well, is vigorous right here. Next up then, we've got the Epion Shield. And besides that then, we've got two different types of base adapters, the standard EW. Gundam Wings swappable style fingers, we've got them in widespread holding and fists already attached onto the Epion. And when it comes to the decals included, we've got some dry rub-on transfers, I used a couple of those up on the shoulders, and then some sticker style decals. But we'll take a look at everything one by one in a little while. First off, let's check out the Epion itself. So jumping right on into the aesthetics, and there's the Master Grade Epion just out of the box, snapped together with a little bit of panel lining. And I have to say, I am thoroughly impressed. I can see why you guys recommended this one so much. It is hard to believe that this is a 10-year-old kit. It does show up here and there with some nub marks up on the surface. There's some mold and seam lines here and there, but nowhere too crazy. And overall, the pros completely outweigh the cons here. You're not likely to get a model kit this unique looking really anywhere else but the Epion. Sure, if Master Grade Versago came out, that would be a whole different story. I hope one would, but something gives me the feeling it will not. Either way, if you need your cell phone, I don't even know how to describe this. It's evil looking, it's dark looking, it's almost like the devil equivalent of the angel that is the Master Grade Wing Zero Custom EW. Honestly, I feel like, I'm not sure if it's just this thing doesn't photograph well or what, but I've seen photos of this posted by tons and tons of people, but you really have to see it in person to like, pick up just how impressive it is. It's glossy, it's got a really dark, broody, unique color scheme, and if it wasn't for that muzzle on its face, it might be easy to forget that this is a Gundam. And those legs, those are like nothing I've ever seen before. As for the extra effort I put into this build besides the straight build, that's everything that is in here. First off, just a standard green sharpie. This was used in order to make the section on the chest and the feet, the clear sections, green. These do come in colorless clear in the box with a sticker underneath. And I find the fact that if you color these in, so they're not just colorless clear, they look a little better than just the sticker under the clear. That's just a personal opinion right there. Next up then I use this panel liner, which is the kind that will fill the panel lines for you. I find this great. This has replaced the standard felt tip fine liner pen for me because it's just so much faster. This does not fade and it just seems to give nice finer lines than the fine liner. Finally then I just use the usual things here while cutting it out, the, the god hand and a file. That is it and it looks fantastic. So anyway, moving on to some 1-100 scale size comparisons, there's the Epion. And there it is standing side by side with the Master Grade Granddaddy 3.0. There it is side by side with a small Gundam, which is the Master Grade F91. A biggish Gundam, which is the Reborn 100 Gundam Mark III. For some reason, I never put enough 1-100 Zakus in these videos, so there's a 1-100 Zaku 2. And finally, there it is side by side with one of the Endless Waltz Gundams. So I will mention that it isn't quite as short as those are. Those are known to be very small mobile suits. This isn't necessarily in the exact same height range. A little bit more normal Gundam sized. So as usual, jumping right on back to the beginning of the video to check out absolutely everything that came in the box. Now let's check it all out one at a time. So the hands on the Epion right here are the same as the rest of the Master Grade EW kit, so that means you can probably use other kit's accessories with it. Let's try it out. Lean in and grab old Shen 
run back here with this big old lawyer sword get rid of epion's fingers like so try out that big old sword still attached to shenlong's fingers i might add and there we go yeah you can use all of the accessories across this line which is a pretty awesome thing i love kit compatibility Okay, now what I did not expect to fit was the shield aspect. That does fit as well. Mm, potential custom right there. Actually, I'm super impressed by the fact that that fits on and holds on. As for the hands we have in here, we've got fists, ones for holding the weapons, and some widespread dynamics. So the same we would have seen with the other kits. So first up in here, we've got the beam sword. This really is one vigorous effect part up here. The part which connects it to Epion is one big, robust wire. They don't make wires for Gunpla like this anymore. This is very, very nice. The big old power cord attaches onto the side skirting armor like this. In order to attach the sword into the hand, we have to use some of the holding style fingers. And finally, you then attach the beam sword with the fingers into the hand and then plug the cable into the bottom of the beam sword. Honestly, this all works out quite well. When I see a wire connecting into anything on a Gompla, I'm kind of a little bit worried at times. Sometimes they're too loose to hold some weight. Sometimes they'll push the arm or whatever it's attached to around and everything doesn't really work out. But that's not the case here. The wire actually works as one big robust support for the weapon. So no matter what way you put it, the wire plus the ABS inner frame makes sure this holds that sword up and doesn't let it drop a millimeter. So next up in here is probably one of the all-time coolest Gundam weapons around. This is the Epion Shield. So it's a defensive shield up top and then a whip-like chain of parts below that that heats up to a super heated, heated heat. But yeah, each one of these segments is segmented, can move, lock into place, and this thing looks absolutely glorious. It's pretty much identical to what we saw with the Tall Geese 3, just, well, that big cooler. To attach this on, it just attaches into the rear of the forearm in the usual Gundam shield kind of way. And honestly, this thing is beyond glorious. So awesome. However, I've been finding that the top joint, the one that connects into the shield, is a little bit on the floppy side at times. Every time, but the time I tried to show it, so uh, yeah, a little bit flop. Most of the time it's okay, but it likes to kind of get loose. But I'm sure you can tighten that up with no effort really. And finally in here we've got a 1-100 scale figure of Miliardo Peacecraft. So moving on to the articulation, and because the Epion is a 10 year old kit, I'm not going to go through every single aspect of this thing's articulation, instead I'm going to try a few test poses instead. First off it's going to be a bit of a crouch and we do have some limitations at the abs, robo abs that is, and the front skirting armor in very master grade endless waltz style is an absolute pain in the butt. It pops off all the time, the armor splits. All in all, the crouch doesn't work out too well, it still looks fine, it just, well, the Epion's not made for ground poses, is it? Next up, trying out a bit of a side lunge, and this is where we realize that those ankles aren't the best when it comes to the side-to-side -side pivot. Again, Epion is not a ground suit, so it won't really make much sense. And I'll also mention the ankles are a little bit on the loose side compared to some of the other joints on this particular kit. I can also mention that the Epion can cross its arms because the shoulders can move forward a lot. The shoulders do look a little bit awkward in this position, but it does mean the arms have a decent range of motion. And the armbands are pretty decent, besides the fact that they get a little bit blocked by that little yellow claw-like segment. As of this point, I do have two troublesome segments right here, so if you want to glue some parts, that is the fin from the side of the leg and the front skirting armors. They like to pop off quite a bit. So getting Epion up on that action base because Epion belongs in the sky, well, so far in the sky that it's in space. And in here we do have an action base adapter, which is quite effective. It's kind of like a little three-pronged adapter that holds on extremely well. But once we do get that up on the action base, of course, once again, the front skirting armor does limit some of the kicks up to the front. We've got a very decent bend of the legs on this kit. There's a lot of nice, expressive articulation to the wings up back, so on the whole, once you get the Epion up in the air, this is where it shines. It could have a little bit more in the abs, it doesn't have much there at all, but at least that makes it fairly solid so it doesn't sag forward or back with the weight of the wings. So finally moving on to the transformation into the flight form, and I have to say I am both confused and impressed by this particular transformation. One, there's a lot more to this than I expected. The mechanism inside the waist that transforms the legs over the back and to become, well, the two heads that we see on the dragon at the end. 
is a very complex yet at the same time very robust structure. However, the instructions are a little bit on the vague side for transforming this section and I did not know what to do with the rear skirting armor the first time I was doing it. Any time after that you'll eventually get it. But just running through the first time with this, it's very unusual. It all works out very well in the end. It looks exactly like it should. And like I said, this is a lot more solid than I expected it to be, especially with that mechanism hidden away inside of the waist. Once again, impressive, but can be a little confusing at first. So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and this is a kit not like what I was expecting at all. I was expecting more like what I've always ranked silver tier with the Master Grade Endless Waltz kits. Those to me have always been my baseline for Master Grades. They've got a really strong internal ABS frame, and they look great on the outside. They can't really pose up too crazy of a storm, but they still look fantastic. Then on the other end of the spectrum, we've got the brand new Wing Zero Custom Verka that came out last year. That got Gundarium tier because it's absolutely not what I was expecting at all. A completely new, improved, redesigned, awesome kit. Well, this right here, the Master Grade Epion, falls somewhere in the middle. This, to me, is gold tier and much better than I was expecting. Of course, it is a 10-year-old kit, but it holds up so well. I'm so glad you guys actually recommended this to me because, honestly, I kept putting it off because I didn't think it looked that great. But it is great and I highly recommend this kit. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews and I'll see you next time. As always, I cannot finish this video without shouting out you guys who support me on the channel memberships and Patreon, including Tyler Sanders, Brian Perez, Craig Jerry, Shanti, and Caleb Engelhart. Actually, I just realized there's a bit of a post video sort of thing. I didn't try out the backpack on the other Endless Walls kits. Let's see, can I get out of here without too much shenanigans? Come off. It looks like the exact same poly cap on the backpack there, so I assume it will work. I'll see what I can grab from over in here. Let me see. Mm. The reason I didn't use the wing in the video is because it's so high, far in there. That is the newer one. I'm gonna go with the, ooh, this death side here with the uh, backpack thingamabobber. Plugging this in my that sound better? Anyway, let's check it out. Very similar to the Epion's backpack, this right here. Off it comes. Will it work? There we go. That doesn't feel quite right. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Does work. Ooh, crap. <laughs> How about the other way around? Let's try popping this on here. And there we go. Actually, it'd be pretty cool to use this to make a kind of standard colored Gundam painted Epion. That'd be cool.